Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. I'm ready to start my next project. It's going to be a white wedding dress. This one is going to be an example of something you can order to be made to your measurements. Obviously I need one as an example to go in the shop and this is what I'm gonna start with. Um, this is where normally when I make a dress I show you what I'm beginning with. Well this time my mannequin is empty because this is going to have to be something I can replicate. So I'm just starting with nothing. It's also going to be slightly different because I'm going to be starting with brand new fabric rather than reclaimed to begin with. I have a roll here of pure silk. I wish you could feel this through the camera because this is the sort of fabric that gets me just a little bit tingly because it's so so oh i won't put it against my face i've got makeup on it's so soft it's just beautiful so i will actually begin with new fabric for a change this i will drape onto the mannequin and use draping techniques to shape it to fit yes yeah, so that's what i'm going to begin with for all of these dresses for this one in particular i've got a stash here of fabrics that i'm going to use and let me put this away again so I've got a stash here of fabrics I'm going to use for this particular one, but obviously the ones that will go over the top of the silk will naturally vary because I will carry on using reclaimed fabrics. It's sort of a wedding dress uh, really, but it could be a baptism dress or a dress for any occasion where you want to feel like a princess in a fairy tale, really. <laughs> it's up to you, of course, the occasion that you want to wear it for. You could wear it for doing a housework for all it matters i feel like cinderella after the ball <laughs> this listing is going to be for white or ivory i don't mind incorporating other colors that's absolutely fine if you're watching this because you're thinking of of ordering a special occasion dress from me then yeah just let me know just send me an email in this one i'm be using this dress probably from the 1960s i would imagine it's quite high necked we've got satin here we've got some pearls some lovely lace this is really nice quality lace the lining is not so great that's quite polyestery so i don't know if i'll use that if i do it'll just be for frills or for making the underneath skirt layer a little bit fuller so that's one thing i'm going to use i'm also going to use a victorian nightgown i was tempted to sell this as is but um no i'm going to be brave i don't like cutting into this because this is a proper victorian white nightgown and it's actually excellent condition normally these come quite stained but this is pristine and you've got some lovely embroidery on glaze at the top here and you've got the mark the embroidered mark at the top oh i think this is more likely edwardian uh, because they've got a manufacturer's label in here but you've also got the embroidered mark there so this would have been worn by somebody in a large stately home where all their washing was sent away to uh, to be laundered and the mark was to distinguish which family it belonged to. So the label on here says Centenary Brand Horrocks's Cloth, established 1791. And there's another label underneath. Oh, this is really exciting. There's actually a really, I don't, it's white. This label here, you can hardly see it, but it says made precisely for Nicholson's London. Nicholson, I'm not sure, Nicholson something London. So that's the shop it was bought from as well. That's cool, isn't it? So yeah, pure white cotton. Um, I'll definitely be incorporating this in this dress. I've also got uh, some pantaloons <laughs> and a, a white petticoat. Also in my stash behind me, I've, um, I've got some pre-washed organic cotton gauze i will probably be incorporating some of this and i might need to wash some more i've got a whole roll of that as well so yeah a bit more um new fabrics in here also i've got a mix of new and reclaimed um lace that i will probably use as well as i need more fabric i will pull it out of the shelves and i've got more dress wedding dresses upstairs i've got ready to cut up if i want them so as i need more i'll show you what i'm using okay i hope you enjoy the video and uh and if you're liking it while you're watching please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new here it'd be lovely to have you back for more videos right i'll just get started <laughs>
Huggle Banter, a podcast for creatives with me, Sarah Hester. This is episode 14. Since then, her business has really bloomed and my life has changed really beyond recognition. do a quick update on how the dress is going. The full length is now all prepared and that's basically the underneath layer and I have gone hunting for some more fabrics to layer over the top and I'm going to use this vintage wedding dress. So I'll probably be using this satin though at the moment it's been backed onto a stiffening fabric so I'll probably take that off because I want this more flowy, I don't want it stiff. I might use some of the lace but I've still got plenty of um, the lace from the other wedding dress that I've started cutting apart. See how much lace we actually need. <laughs> I'm going to build up layers of frills and ruffles at the bottom and for that I found some of my more pieces of fabric. I'll obviously cut out the rust stains but I think this is another Victorian petticoat so I shall use that because I love this cut out embroidery on glaze pattern at the bottom there is really pretty and I've got some satin and yeah some more sort of flowy I'm not quite sure what this fabric is but it's really really soft actually it's really nice so I'm going to use these smaller pieces to build up some of the frills at the bottom and then the wedding dress and the bigger pieces form the flowy bits to go over the top so that's what I'm gonna start building up now happy with it so far
again the dress is finished it's many many hours later we are now done and i'm really pleased i'm really happy i tried it on just now and yeah i definitely felt like a princess wearing it it, it did feel beautiful to wear so i'm really happy yeah so this is it this is the finished thing i will obviously pick up the camera in a second because i can't get the dress back far enough for you to see the full length in this room i've still got a few threads to snip there's always more threads to snip but apart from that it is completely done we're going to cornwall soon probably will have come back by the time you watch this video but we're going to take this uh, with us to do the photo shoot and get all the photos done ready to advertise it on etsy i don't know if the video has already gone up of me making the velvet cloaks but um we're taking a whole load of velvet cloaks with us as well because we thought they'd look good together. So I will have this dress, this actual dress for sale on the shop, but um, also this is going to be an example for what you can order to be made custom fit for you. So I'll take your measurements and the length of the dress that you'd like it, whether it's knee length or floor length. So then I'd make it in the same style, but obviously there'll be differences because I'll be using different fabrics, different vintage wedding dresses um, to put it all together, but it will have the same sort of fairy tale overall look. Because I'm using vintage wedding dresses to make this dress, the listing will be for a white or ivory dress. There will be another one for coloured dresses because I love making coloured dresses fancy dresses as well so this is obviously ideally suited for a wedding but of course it doesn't have to be any special occasion where you'd like white or ivory then that's absolutely fine okay enough rambling from me I'll give you a closer look the weather is rubbish today so I hope it's bright enough in here for you so as, as you can see I incorporated the embroidery on glaze from the Victorian nightgown here I've hand stitched beads up here and these are the pearls that were intact from, from one of the wedding dresses that I used the material for. And then you've got lots of lace and different, we've got some organic cotton gauze here, more braidry and glaze here, bridal lace here, different sorts of bridal lace coming down here. And then the skirt puffs right out, so it's a really pretty fairy tale shape. Um, if I go right over here, I'm going to try and fit in the whole dress for you if I can. Uh, almost so as I was saying so further down the skirt we've got more bridal lace we've got tulle and we've got pure silk floating over here this oh I love this fabric it's gorgeous so floating and ethereal and then the skirt is just made up of layers of layers different fabrics so actually the skirt is quite heavy and underneath underneath on the lining layer there's two rows of frills which gives it a really nice weight so that when you're dancing it really swings and sways it's beautiful and then turning it round and here's the back it obviously fastens with a zip that comes all the way down and then we've got more we've got the bridal satin lace with the silk this is part of the victorian petticoat which is victorian i when i looked at the seams how the seams were sewn that's definitely victorian so that's lovely and we've got some bridal satin in the underneath layers here more lace here and yeah generally you must you probably got the idea by now so that's it from me for now but i will add on the end uh, probably a few clips of me actually wearing the dress and getting the photos done in cornwall also when you can see someone wearing it you can see the movement better as well so i hope you enjoyed that bit which i'll add on now and that's it from me i hope you enjoyed watching if so please give it a thumbs up and if you like seeing the sort of sewing videos then please subscribe because i do them every time i make something new and also i do weekly vlogs if you're interested in that sort of thing so i'll see you again soon bye